Hello and welcome to this session about reinventing ways to purchase health services through national health insurance. I'm Laurel Hatt, a senior program director with Results for Development, and I'm here to moderate this presentation on our work on strategic health purchasing in Indonesia. Indonesia's national health insurance scheme, known in Bahasa as Jaminan Kesehatan Nasional or JKN, covers more than 80% of the population, over 200 million people. Launched in 2014, JKN is an important means of providing access to comprehensive health services in Indonesia, but rapidly increasing health expenditures and ongoing budget deficits have threatened the sustainability of the program. At the same time, challenges have emerged with the quality of care and a rapidly expanding private health sector. As the coverage of JKN expands, the National Health Insurance Agency has greater and greater ability to use its strong purchasing power to increase value for money in health, both strengthening financial sustainability and also improving quality and service delivery outcomes. This can be accomplished by making changes to how the insurance agency contracts with qualified healthcare providers, by carefully specifying what services will be paid for and the expected quality of those services, by revising provider payment incentives to align with the goals of quality and efficiency, and by carefully monitoring whether the desired service delivery outcomes are being achieved. In this session, we will provide an overview of two pilot programs to improve strategic purchasing in Indonesia, one focused on TB care and one on maternal and newborn health. To design these pilots, we facilitated a consultative and data-driven process in collaboration with Indonesia's Ministry of Health, its National Health Insurance Agency, senior technical experts, and health offices in different districts around Indonesia. Funding for the consultation and technical design process has been provided by the U.S. Agency for International Development and the World Bank under the auspices of two projects, the Indonesia Health Financing Activity and the TB Private Sector Program. Funding for the pilot implementation will be provided by the Government of Indonesia and USAID. I'd like to now introduce two of my RPD colleagues who have played an instrumental role in the design of the TB and MNH strategic health purchasing pilots. Our first presenter will be Aditya Nugroho. Aditya is a program officer at R4D with more than nine years of experience working on policy analysis and social health insurance in Indonesia. His analysis has informed the design of the TB purchasing pilots. Prior to joining R4D, he worked as a research analyst for Indonesia's National Health Insurance Agency. Our second presenter will be Indraini Fitriya Shah, also a program officer at R4D. Indraini is a midwife with 20 years of experience working as a public health professional with the Indonesian government and national and international NGOs. Her expertise includes maternal and neonatal health, project management, and integrated health information systems. So welcome to you all and over to you, Adit, for the first presentation. Yeah, thank you, Laurel. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Aditya Nugroho. Today, I with Laurel and also with Inra Nisha, we are going to present our works related to the strategic health purchasing for TB services and then also for maternal and newborn health services uh, in Indonesia. Uh, our presentation topics will be reinventing ways to purchase health services through national health insurance. Yeah, I will start my presentation uh, to share the information about current TB uh, situation in Indonesia or tuberculosis situation in Indonesia. We know that uh, tuberculosis burden in Indonesia is still high. However, the response has not been completely effective until now. The TB burden in Indonesia ranks the second highest in the world. And TB remains the leading cause of death by communicable, communicable disease in Indonesia. Approximately 875,000 people are developing uh, tuberculosis in Indonesia each year. There were 97,000 people who died because of tuberculosis in 2019. Actually, Indonesia has made progress over the past decade uh, in reducing TB incidence and increasing treatment success rates. 
However, we are still having uh, significant challenges to eliminate TB. Our work will be focusing to improve the health purchasing model, tooling the payment system with the quality of care. The strategic health purchasing team in Indonesia already conducted several studies using national health insurance data claim analysis and then also using incentive mapping method. We find that the way providers are contracted and paid through national health insurance or JKN, Jaminan Kesehatan Nasional, still creates incentive for several problematic TB diagnosis and treatment patterns. First, low rates of TB notification. It happens both at hospital level and at primary care facilities, especially, especially at private sectors. TB case notification is a case report that should be conducted by health facility when they are uh, conducting medical examination towards uh, suspected TB patients. Based on the regulation, it should be conducted mandatory by the health facility. However, for private sectors, they need to invest more in providing TB services. However, they don't get additional financial incentives in doing that. Second issue is high referral to hospitals for treatment, especially among primary care facilities, particularly on private uh, sectors. This associates with the fact that the current payment system at the National Health Insurance, the capitation system, doesn't give any additional incentives for primary care facilities to provide comprehensive TB treatment from diagnosis phase until treatment phase. And then the third issue, uh, there is a low down referral from hospitals to primary care for treatment. This relates to the fact that the current payment system uh, at the hospital level, Indonesia's case-based group or INA CBGs, it still gives high incentives for hospitals to keep TB patients to be treated in the hospitals, even though those are cases without comorbidities and without complications. I need to mention, based on the regulation, drug sensitive TB without comorbidities and without complications should be comprehensively treated at the primary care facilities. And then the last issue is inadequate treatment monitoring and adherence. This relates to the fact that uh, many of TB patients are treated at hospitals. However, hospitals are not prepared to give uh, treatment monitoring for drug sensitive TB with complications and comorbidities because it should be treated uh, in primary care facilities. Based on those identified problems, we uh, identify several uh, strategies for tuberculosis services. It includes four components. First one is benefit specification. Second one, contracting arrangements. The third one, modifying provider payment system. And then the last one is to strengthening, to strengthen the monitoring system. Our main objective is to shift TB treatment from hospitals to primary care facilities. The objective is to improve outcomes and then also to improve the efficiency. We are going to pilot stronger payment incentives, so it will be attractive for primary care facilities, especially the private ones, to deliver TB services. New contractual and, and payment arrangements will improve TB notification and quality of care. I will go through one by one for this each component. First, the benefit specification. Basically, we are aligning the benefit package in the National Health Insurance with the benefit package at the National Guidelines for TB Services enacted by the Ministry of Health. We want to specify which services will be included in the national health insurance contracts and the service delivery or quality standards required in order health facility to be paid. The second component is contracting arrangements. We are going to add several TB criteria to the JKN or national health insurance credentialing process. And then we will also update contracts to link payment with the specified service delivery or quality standards. And then we are also aiming to improve referral pathway by make it by make it explicit at the contracting agreement between payer, the National Health Insurance Agency, with the health facility. 
And then the next component is modification of provider payment system. We are proposing to use a prospective uh, payment system, which is service fee for each diagnostic examination. We are aiming to give additional incentives for health facility in conducting diagnostic examination for TB patient. And then the second one, we are also proposing to use bundled episode based payment system. This payment will be separated into two installments. First, the payment will be conducted after TB patient completing the intensive phase of treatment, which will be at the second month of the treatment. And then the second payment will be conducted after the TB patients completing the whole uh, treatment phase, which will be at the six months of the treatment. Uh, the objective is to improve the continuity of care of TB treatment. And then we are also going to link the payment to the case notification. The next one is to uh, the next component is strengthening the monitoring system. We are going to integrate the information systems between national TB programs and then also with the national health insurance so that these information systems can uh, interact each other, each other and then TB notification can be improved. And then the next one, we want to optimize TB case manager roles, especially their roles in coordinating care related to TB services. I think that's it from TB side. I will offer uh, next presentation to Mbak Indra Inisha. Hi everyone, I'm Indra Inisha from Result for Development. Beside the TB issue and our proposed solution that has been explained by Aditya, maternal and newborn health are high priority concern in Indonesia. We know that maternal mortality is one indication of health care quality of country. Data show that maternal mortality ratio in Indonesia is stagnant in around 300 deaths per 100,000 live birth. It is the highest number in the Asian region. This number is not just a number, it was mother, important role on the family and society. Losing one mother is not just about bringing sadness, but it has long-term reverse effect to the socioeconomic of the family, community, and the country. Identifying the root of maternal mortality problems and finding solution becomes one of the health priority of Indonesian government. That is not easy. It has several unique challenges here in Indonesia. For example, the number of population is more than 270 million, living in the five main islands and other 600 islands. To provide the health care, especially for maternal and neonatal care for millions of population that's spreading out to the thousand islands, it is required a lot of things. One of, the, one of them is the proper, proportional number of health workers. To answer this need, Indonesian government launched the village midwife program in 1989. The government pays 1,000 midwives living in the village community and provided basic antenatal and neonatal care to its village community. The program is keep going, is keep going on until now. And beside the midwife that is working under government scheme in the public sector, private midwife plays important role in providing the maternal care as stated in the slide. They serve 29% of delivery, 42% of antenatal care, and 41% of health planning services. The role of midwife in the community and healthcare facility is considered successful if we see from the increasing mother receiving maternal care as on the slide is 74%. However, the maternal mortality number is remain high. Slide. The government of Indonesia launched a comprehensive universal health care program named the National Health Insurance System or Jaminan Kesehatan Nasional JKN a single payer UHC system with 2,203 million members in 2018, the GKN is the largest single payer system in the world. The health workers, including midwife, nowadays are getting incentive for their health services through the GKN program. 
However, there are identified issues on the GKN payment schemes. First, many of the private midwife are not part of GKN insurance system, only 26 of participation. This is due to the complicated administrative process for the midwife on claiming the incentive, and also the amount of incentive is considered low. For example, on providing one antenatal care, the midwife get 50,000 rupiah equal to 3.5 US dollar with current currency. It is a big loss since many pregnant women are chosen to get their care with private midwife. Secondly, there is inadequate quality assurance for maternal health services but midwife. As known, the midwife are graduated from different public and private midwifery school with diverse quality that determine their knowledge and skill. And when the midwife starts working within government or private sector, the opportunity to increase their capacity through higher level of education or training are very limited. Within this disparate quality on the midwife knowledge and skill, it is for sure affecting the maternal care they provided for pregnant women. And it is required reliable and measurable quality assurance of the midwife practice to overcome the potential risk on conducting uh, the maternal care. The last one is the lack of continuity of care throughout the whole pregnancy. Research found that the continuity of midwifery care contribute to improving quality and safety of maternity care. High quality evidence indicates that women who receive care in these models are more likely to have effective care, better experience and improve clinical outcome. Unfortunately, it is still an issue on the GKN scheme. Next slide. In this pilot, we would like to contribute to overcome the maternal mortality problem through the GKN scheme. Our proposed model addresses the four core aspects on strategic purchasing. First is benefit specification, contracting arrangement, provider payment, and monitoring. The objective of this pilot is to connect the payment by GKN with the quality of maternal neonatal health services. Let's start one by one. First, the benefit specification. It is specifying which services will be included in the GKN contract and the midwife or provider must provide the health service uh, delivery with a quality standard in order to get paid. Meaning the midwife or provider who participate in the pilot must follow the Ministry of Health Standard Treatment Guideline, including clinical guideline of antenatal care delivery and postnatal care standard for quality of care. Second is uh, contracting arrangement. The pilot will use contract to link condition for GKN payment with clinical and quality requirement. To do this, the pilot will form a maternal health provider network to enable provider to work closely together along with referral hospital to deliver comprehensive maternal health service for women. Next is uh, provider payment or uh, we call it bundle payment for maternal health services. Under the pilot, the payment for payment for antenatal care, delivery, delivery, and postnatal care will change from currently is fee for services to an episode-based payment paid in two, install, two installments to the service delivery networks. This will address the high administrative burden of the current uh, fee for service claim submission process. The payment is also designed and priced to create stronger incentive for primary care provider to follow women throughout the pregnancy. The last one is monitoring arrangement, linking the GKN contracting and payment terms with clinical and quality requirements require sufficient monitoring mechanism for providers and payers to ensure adherence to, con to contractual terms and appropriate release of payment. For that purpose, we engage network coordinators to coordinate among primary care provider ensure patient follow-up and oversee referral procedures, and of course, monitor uh, service delivery outcome. So all that for core approach is basically as its objective, it's to link uh, between the GKN uh, with the quality of maternal health care by midwife or primary health providers. Thank you. Uh, I offer to Laurel. Thanks, Yunraini. 
So our final slide summarizes RFID's collaborative analysis and design process to strengthen strategic purchasing in Indonesia that we have supported since 2017. At the outset, we worked with key Indonesian government agencies to review the landscape of existing regulations and laws governing health purchasing. Based on the results of that policy review, we worked with the government to establish a technical working group in 2018 that would propose changes to regulations around purchasing in order to achieve better quality and efficiency results. The TWG then commissioned a qualitative and quantitative data collection effort to analyze service delivery challenges in Indonesia for TB and maternal newborn health that are related to existing purchasing arrangements and collaboratively developed a series of policy recommendations. Our team then worked with the TWG throughout 2020 uh, to craft the technical designs for the TB and MNH pilots, just described by Adit and Inraini. We conducted careful analysis of the budget implications of these pilots and their expected impacts on quality and service delivery outcomes. And we began engagement with district st stakeholders to refine the designs. Finally, this year, we are excited to move into the implementation stage. We're getting final government approval and securing the funding and hope to be launching the pilot implementation in the middle of this year. So in summary, this presentation has highlighted the key dimensions of our support for improved strategic purchasing in Indonesia, both the collaborative design process in consultation with local and government stakeholders and the technical elements of strong purchasing arrangements. And those again are benefit specification that clarifies exactly what services will be covered and what quality those services must achieve contracting arrangements that ensure qualified providers offer excellent care and facilitate engagement with private providers, provider payment mechanisms that incentivize quality, encourage cost-effective service provision at the primary level, and promote continuity of care, and monitoring by establishing network coordinators who promote a coordinated approach to patient care and monitor the achievement of service delivery standards. We're excited to move into implementation of the pilot and hope that this presentation has helped highlight how strategic purchasing can improve both the quality of care for priority host programs, as well as improve value for money. Thank you for your questions in the chat boxes. We'll be available for the next few minutes to keep answering them. Thank you very much. Thank you.